Hello there, this is Dr. Samurai, a uh, professor in Japan specializing in international social pathology. And this is my credentials. Okay. And the uh, topic of today's my minute lecture is Mr. Richard Foley. Okay. So, as usual, from general information to the personal information okay so let's start with the, today's thug profile number 25 mr richard Foley. uh he used to work for a uh, system engineering company called esl Though this is a little bit of a personal information, but uh, because I used to teach English as a second language, ESL, I automatically thought he was a teacher too. So I contacted him. Turned out to be that ESL is totally different acronym. But uh, that was the beginning. Anyway, uh, he was a... Uh, uh, system engineer at the company there a new uh, fresh recruit started to work named uh, Laura Black Ms. Laura Black very beautiful lady because of uh, Mr. Fowley's stalking act Laura contacted the police this restraining order was issued everything started after this restraining order okay he uh, carried multiple rifles and guns you know uh, bullet proof vest he also uh, put the uh, earplugs on also that the leather gloves that uh, you know those assassins use when they shoot uh, rifles and uh, he uh, entered the company which fired him already and he entered uh, the building killed seven people and severely injured four including Laura so Laura Richard's main target was not uh, killed although severely injured and at this moment mr Foley is sitting at the cell of a uh, you know death row at the san quentin state prison in california okay and uh, more detailed general information it was uh, when he was at the age of 36 that uh, he met a 22 year old cute looking new recruit Laura Black and this story became a movie uh, in which Brooke Seals played Ms. Laura Black although I assume uh, Ms. Black didn't want uh, Ms. Brooke Seals to play her role rather she wanted to be healthy and working and enjoying her own life but anyway you know it became a kind of a movie which we i watched it was well done but anyway it was literally a love at the first sight okay and richard since started to uh, approach very very hard one time there was this opportunity to have lunch in three miss black and richard and one other male uh, friend and that kind of spurred richard's momentum to go for uh, miss black so richard went to uh, a human resource you know uh, uh, department and checked Laura's address, phone number, and copied her desk key, and uh, also made a uh, handmade cake for her and put it on her desk, which is nice when, I mean, if Laura likes him, 
it must have been a beautiful thing. But uh, when uh, the person didn't have any special feeling or chemistry, you know, receiving a handmade thing is kind of too heavy for those who receive one, right? Uh, Richard kept calling her every few hours, even uh, appeared at Ms. Laura's uh, aerobics class in the evening. That is why uh, police was asked to issue a restraining order. And it is said that the total number of letters he sent to Ms. Black was uh, about 200. Like I said, Richard was finally fired by the company and he carried 3,000 bullets and multiple uh, rifles and guns and uh, buck knife, uh, bullet proof vest, earplugs and leather gloves and everything and entered the company through its side door by shooting up to glass door I'm sorry and uh, he was uh, kept shooting those whom he met on his way to Laura's office which was on the second floor as soon as Laura saw Richard at the entrance of her office she you know uh, slam closed the door to uh, Richard's face that lit a big fire and uh, Richard you know uh, I think uh, uh, shooted a couple of rounds you know on, on the door that Laura closed and through the door uh, Laura was shot in her shoulder and also one of her uh, lungs was collapsed so even after she recuperated she must have had uh, after effects you know which must have been substantial to her everyday life anyway. Laura was not dead. As soon as she recognized Richard was out of her office, she stood up and called 911. Okay? Police negotiated with Richard for five hours and Richard finally gave up and came down. The total number of the bullets he fired was 98. 98. Okay. And when he was arrested, what Richard said was he was not interested in uh, killing Laura or other people. He thought he would just uh, commit the suicide. That's what uh, Richard said to police. Okay. And the scary thing is, although I know Richard very well, the act of his itself sounds very scary. Uh, even after he was arrested, several months after, uh, Laura kept receiving letters from Richard multiple times. Even after she kept changing her address. And in one of his letters to her is written, In the end, you won. Uh -huh. Because of this incident in 1990, stalker regulation law was set up in effect, you know, over all the United States. Okay, so this was a kind of big incident. And moving on to uh, part two, Richard, that I know. Actually, we have been uh, corresponding for over 10 years now, I think. Uh, as a matter of fact, before filming this, I just finished writing my uh, response to uh, Richard's letter, which is always typed up. He was complaining about uh, his typewriter, which has a tiny, teeny memory. is not uh, working well and thinking about buying new one through a lawyer. But anyway, as I always say, you know, to punish those who commit committed crime is not my business, you know, and I am not a, a law officer either. So all I can make 
is I make friends with them and get close to the person as a friend and try to know the deep down truth from uh, you know where uh, friendly you know uh, uh, communications and me and Richard are a totally different type Richard is into math and science and he is one of those who loves Star Trek and Star Wars and all of those things and uh, I hate those movies I'm sorry because we are totally opposite you know to each other we kind of have a good chemistry you understand either you have a similar personality or you have something that the other other person uh, does not and we belong to the latter and he has a kind of a bad uh, diabetes so he you know uh, has to uh, shoot uh, insulin you know to lead a, you know normal life but uh, so far I think I visited him for three times at San Quentin and whenever I visit he knew it in advance right so he controls what he eats you know in the morning and he controls the uh, the amount of uh, uh, diabetes medicine he takes in the morning so that uh, he could enjoy what I could offer like cheeseburgers and M&M and, &M and potato chips and uh, coca-cola no diet okay because <laughs> uh, it's a uh, once in uh, every several months deal you know including uh, uh, his attorney's visits and stuff but anyway when we meet it's kind of special day for both of us when the first time I uh, visited Richard knowing that he is in death row you know I of course had this uh, thing that uh, I shouldn't uh, maybe touch the execution topic and the things like that right you understand what I'm talking about I just didn't want to be you know uh, uh, obnoxious right and I felt that way all the more when I saw uh, the person's eyes uh, right you know over Richard's shoulder there are only I think I think I'm right there are only six cages visitation with the death row inmates must be done in those six cages right so I could see another person seeing his own guest over big Richard's shoulder and I couldn't forget his eyes it was so impressive I think I could clearly tell the fear in his eyes that is looking at the death not so far away so I was a little bit uh, not nervous but uh, trying to be extra careful but at the same time I came all the way from Japan you know taking the plane and stuff so I slowly and carefully started asking like uh, do you have a uh, nightmares and stuff when you you know sleep right and and he was like no I mean no means no no that's the Richard's answer and I go like but you know being in a death row have you uh, uh, not uh, you know thought about the final execution and stuff listen he goes I'm now like in the middle of 60 right and when my uh, legal transaction goes all the way up to the Supreme Court it takes at least like 30 years right so that means I will be like over 90 years old and I'm I'm pretty much positive I would have been dead because of my diabetes so you know 
I don't have to worry about that. My idea, he didn't say that in words, but uh, he meant he didn't have to worry about death itself. No bias execution, especially now the governor of California is uh, Mr. Newsom, who is uh, ardently against uh, death penalty. So uh, who knows? California could be joined in one of those where a capital punishment is not going to be done in the future okay he also said he is ready to accept his uh, natural death so he put the sign on his cell that uh, please do not use this resuscitating uh, uh, device even when uh, he went into coma and things like that. I think there's that kind of rule in a death row, whether uh, he uh, uh, wishes for resuscitation or not. So they pretty, you know, all of them pretty much must uh, put up the sign whether they uh, want it or not. And he he the sign says no. Do you understand what I'm saying? He said uh, like this. In other words, this is like part of my uh, retirement plan. He used the phrase retirement plan, you know, because, uh, you know, you are incarcerated. You can, uh, uh, you don't get wet by rain and uh, you can eat and you can meet doctors although the freedom is very much cut, cut short right but he said it was his uh, retirement plan and as soon as i heard this phrase i suddenly relaxed myself and started to ask whatever i would like to ask it's like my break was off now because of the phrase so i asked him uh, have you ever uh, done anything violent before this big incident? And he goes, no. But uh, I tell you, uh, when I was uh, in my car in the parking lot of the company, there comes a guy who uh, play like a, you know, a righteous person for a weak girl. And he came close to me. And he knocked on the glass of my car door, you know, like a camping car. And he said at the time he had a gun, you know, right uh, under the newspaper on his knee. If he had opened the door, I would have shot the guy for sure. But he didn't go so far. So he got lucky. That's what he said. But uh, that means he didn't do anything violent before this uh, Laura Black incident. I think uh, this is the information that I read afterward. But uh, that uh, mm -hmm. article said he went to see Laura the day before the incident to, uh, to pull, pull down that uh, restraining order. And if she had said no, he thought he would have committed suicide in front of her. That's what he said. So, carefully thinking back, this might not have been all about Lawler. There might have been something different behind this. As a matter of fact, uh, during the conversation, he happened to uh, mention something like, uh, I was thinking to finish my life by around 40 anyway. So it was, it was certain that he had this, uh, some desire for suicide in himself, you know, apart from what uh, happened between Laura and him. Richard, is uh, uh, the the oldest son of six brothers and sisters, and his father was uh, uh, working for a military 
you know, for some period. His father was、uh, kind of a、uh, quiet type of person. That doesn't mean he didn't have any love toward Richard, but、uh, he was kind of a quiet person. You know, that was his character. And he had to、uh, move very often because of his position in the military. So that means、uh, Richard had to move very often too, which means he could not make true friends anywhere. Make friends, you have to leave. Make friends, you have to leave, and stuff like that. So he himself said he gave up trying to make. You know, a true friend in his childhood. And he was always playing on his own. So I asked him, Wasn't, weren't you、uh, feeling lonely? And his answer was, My mother seemed to be thinking I'm playing happy. So, you know, it was not a direct no. She seemed to be thinking I was. Playing happy on my own. That means he was not happy. But、uh, it was all he could do because there's nobody else. Father was quiet. Mother was.、Uh, mother didn't hate him, but mother was the type to let Richard alone, kind of type, not the intimate type. So he had no choice but to play with the blocks or whatever on his own. Normally,、uh, kids, most of the time, kill time is communicating with mother or father or anyway, people around him. Communication and occasional,、uh, you know, occasional、uh, physical contacts. But、uh, in his case, he had to kill time doing something else. On his own. That's why his personality is like into solving puzzles and quizzes. And、uh, he himself knows that he has this uh, uh, tendency to be a little bit、uh, obsessive and compulsive. This character of his comes from. Him having to spend time on his own when he was a kid. Does this make sense? He played, a, he played a, alone, solving puzzles and quizzes without communicating with adults, without communicating with his mother. So, you know, he sometimes writes to me saying that,、uh, you know, I won $20 the other day. For winning the bra bra quiz. Or, you know, last Sunday I again was、uh, absorbed myself into、uh, this puzzle I was working on and、uh, I lost six hours again. So he knows he has that tendency to、uh, be absorbed in something for a long time and couldn't get. Himself out easily once he is hooked with something. I kind of think this、uh, incident with Laura was just、uh, another symptom symptoms of his, which he developed to survive his、uh, lonely childhood. That does not mean, you know, it was okay, because it didn't have anything to do with Laura. But、uh, his obsession with Laura came from his having to kill his time on his own for a long time. This I can tell you. Except for when we actually talk to each other in person at、uh, visitation, we made it a rule not to talk about things. Related to uh, his uh, trial. But、uh, he keeps telling me interesting things you know, about what, how he spends his life, you know, and, and what he loves is like that, you know, that the electric pot to boil hot water. He removes the lid, crosses these、uh, wires across on top. And put a slice of bread 
and I think he put a little bit of water in the bottom and uh, it will make the bread like uh, the fresh bread out of uh, baking uh, this uh, device. Does, does this make sense? It's like it becomes very soft inside, right? Once you uh, warm it up in the microwave and stuff, the same thing. He does it with the uh, electric pot and he cooks his own egg sandwiches which he keeps from the breakfast or something and put it in between and uh, watch football on Sunday afternoon that's what he loves I don't do things like that but uh, you know hearing things like that kind of makes me feel happy you know oh yes yes I have to you know wrap this up by you know finishing saying this in the letter that uh, arrived the other day said uh, he was infected by new coronavirus you know or virus finally and uh, I wish he wrote it in the first line so that uh, I could bring uh, this infectant and uh, you know before I start uh, reading his letter but uh, uh, because the message was uh, very close to the end of his letter I almost finished reading his letter when he said uh, I got uh, corona I know it was not a malicious thing but uh, having uh, asthma myself uh, I wish uh, he would have had let me know that well in advance so that I could prepare. But uh, uh, San Quentin Prison in California, that's the center of uh, coronavirus nightmare. I know number changes all the time, but uh, I'm positive over 2,000 inmates were infected and close to 30 inmates lost their lives. So I hope the virus on the paper wouldn't kill me protected by the envelope and things like that the last part i am just kidding but uh, i think uh, in a funny story i dropped to uh, some uh, point that uh, uh, might help you think about you know your life so uh, if i had done that you know i am very happy so until next time please have a wonderful time on your own or with your loved ones and let's see you next time okay bye bye now